One common thing I hear about using the async pipe to subscribe to streams reactively is something to the effect of, sure it looks nice in a tutorial, but when you have to handle errors it gets ugly. To demonstrate a way you can still handle errors nicely with the async pipe, or at least I think so, I published this video. And the general idea is that you just have two streams, a stream for your data and a separate stream for errors. So I've got the actual code up now so we can have a little bit of a closer look. And you can see here we have the two streams, we have a user stream that we are using to just get our data, and then we have a user error stream based on that stream which we are using for our errors. And then we can just subscribe to both of those streams in the template with the async pipe. Now the method in that video and what we're looking at right now is fine, but there is still some level of awkwardness to it. Probably the most notable being that you have to be careful not to actually trigger your observable twice. So for example here I have an observable that is making a request to an API. So if I'm subscribing to this twice, there is the potential that I'll actually send off that request to the API twice. And that's not what I want. I just want to catch errors from that single subscription. So to make sure this isn't an issue, we need to make sure that we cache this observable and use share replay so that we don't actually fire off those multiple requests. And another thing that can be improved here is that we can significantly simplify the template if we abstract some of this functionality out into a dumb component. The example I used for the video just has everything living inside of our homepage component, which is a smart component. So it's getting a bit complex in here. So that is what we are going to do in this video. We'll be taking a look at a more optimized version of the same basic principle from the previous video, having a separate stream for errors that are displayed using the async pipe. And this does require some additional dependencies and abstractions, but the end result is very clean. So I'm going to link to both of the relevant previous videos in the description, one that covers the general idea of using an error stream with the async pipe, which is what I used as a base for this tutorial. I've just made some modifications to this code base. And I'll also link to a separate tutorial on having a dumb component supply their own loading template. So I'll be using concepts from both of these in this video, but I won't be covering those concepts in detail in this video. So make sure to go back and watch those, especially the error handling one, if you need more context. So the first thing we can do to simplify this and to address the issue with potentially triggering the source observable twice by subscribing to the error stream is to incorporate NGRX component store. As is usually the case, component store can make our lives a lot easier when we are trying to code reactively. Now, if you need some additional context for component store, if you've never used that before, I'll also link to some of my previous videos on that. And one of the maintainers for Component Store, Brandon Roberts, is also currently putting out a fantastic series on Component Store right now. So I will link to that as well. So let's see what Component Store can actually do for us here. So most of what we're looking at is just a standard Component Store setup. We have our state that we are interested in, a user and the user error. We have some selectors to select that state. That's how our component is going to be able to pull that data in and do something with it and these values are initialized to null. Now the interesting part is the effect. So what we will do is we'll call this from the home page to load the user into the application. And I won't get into explaining how component store effects work in this video, but the general idea here is that we call this effect, it will switch to the get user observable stream from our service, and then we will update our state with whatever values that emits, so when that emits a user, we're going to update this user state with whatever that value was. And if it errors, we are going to update our user error state. So now in our homepage, we just make sure to trigger that effect. And then you can see we can just grab those two separate streams from the store. Now from here, everything could just be the same as in the last error handling video. Our template uses the async pipe to subscribe to both of these streams. And if the error stream emits, it is going to display an error instead of uh, the loading or the user state. Now, an important difference here with this example compared to the last one is that before we were using the same observable stream, our user error stream used the user stream and it just piped on some additional operators in order to catch those errors. But with this component store approach, we have two completely separate bits of data in our state and we have separate streams for that data. 
So the only way our observable that will be talking to the API or whatever it's talking to, to get the value, the only way that gets triggered is through calling this load user effect. So we could call it quits there and that would be a great optimization, but I've also made an additional optimization as well. So in the template, I now have this separate user card dumb component that just takes in values from the two streams as standard synchronous inputs. And if we take a look at that component, you can see we just have some logic in the template for deciding how to display the data and errors. So you might change this depending on what exactly you want, but I'll show you exactly how I have it set up. So right now I'm using the get user method, which will just return a value after two seconds successfully. So in the case of a successful emission from the stream, we just display the loading template until the stream emits, and then we display the data. If I change this to get user with error, that stream is going to error. So now if I refresh, it's going to display that loading template initially, but when the stream errors, we display the error message instead. And I also have this other method set up that will return a stream that emits multiple values and it's only going to error on the third value. So if we save that and try again, you can see that we get the loading template initially, I get the first value and then I get the second value. And then when the stream errors, we replace it with just the error. So in my opinion, the end result is super clean and nice to work with. And I much prefer this compared to a more imperative approach to error handling without the async pipe subscribing to the stream in your class and setting data from that stream on a class member, for example. But I would be curious to hear what your opinion is on what I have set up here. Okay, that's it for this video. Feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. And if you like the video, please consider leaving a like or subscribe. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.